Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Gathering Online. My name is Zach Zeno, and I'm so glad that you guys are joining us today as we gather together virtually. Uh, now, before we jump into service, I've got a few quick announcements for you. Uh, and the first one is our volunteer training night. So this is the night that's coming up on, on August, not October, my bad, August 22nd uh, from 6 to 7.30. Uh, this is an opportunity for, uh, one, all the ministries to come together, uh, to have a meal together, and then to discuss the things that they need to be aware of for this next year. Um, but it's also an opportunity for you if you are not already involved in a ministry uh, and you want to get some information about different ministries to come and learn about what's going on in these different ministries and how you can get involved. So uh, I want to encourage you, uh, everyone out there, whether you're a volunteer already or not, to come join us this night. Uh, it's going to be August 22nd. Um, and uh, there will be food. Uh, how it'll work is we'll all gather together to eat and then we'll split up into our different ministry groups to discuss the things that we need to discuss. Uh, and if you're coming to try and learn about some, some of the different groups, uh, you'll be able to pop around and, and kind of gain some insight as to what's going on in each group and where you might wanna get plugged in. Um, if you are gonna go, please sign up at gracegathering.com uh, slash weekly update. You'll find the link there. Uh, this is very, very important, so I want to make sure that uh, I stress that we encourage you to prioritize this uh, in your schedule. Uh, other than that, uh, we just have uh, the Back to School Bash. The next one is going to be uh, the East Sites uh, here at the East Site, August 21st from 4 to 7. So if that's something that you're interested in, we'd love to have you come out and join us for that scavenger hunt and the family challenges. Uh, and if you'd like to volunteer, we do need people to volunteer for that as well. So you can come join us for that. Uh, and then final announcement is the North site is going to be having baptisms uh, on August 21st. Um, and so if you are wanting to get baptized, if you're ready and you're uh, usually attending the North site, um, you can get signed up at gracegathering.com backslash baptisms. Uh, if you don't attend the North site and you're ready to get baptized, still go to that and we'll get it figured out for you to get baptized at your site uh, within the next couple of, uh, within the next season. So um, that's all the announcements that I have for you today. Uh, let's go ahead and prepare our hearts for a time of worship together. And good morning, Grace Gathering. We're so glad that you could join us this morning to worship. Wherever you are, I would just invite you to take that posture of worship, um, whether it's standing, kneeling, we even see in the scriptures, it speaks about raising our hands and shouting for joy before the Lord. So wherever you are, let's just do that this morning. Just posture yourself. Let's give him thanks this morning for who he is, for all that he's done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This amazing grace. Oh, this is unfair.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Levi Francois. I want to welcome you to Grace Gathering. Uh, and I actually want to uh, talk about an interesting stat that I read um, just this past week. I was looking at uh, the website Barna. I don't know if you guys have, uh, have ever been on that website, but they typically do just church st- uh, statistics. And, um, and I was reading about just Christians, uh, uh, active Christians, um, that attend church regularly and the reasons for why uh, they attend church. And it had these three responses from these individuals. And what it said was um, 82% of Christians enjoyed going to church. 
and 9% said that they go to church because it is of habit. And then we had another 9% said, or say that they go to church because they have to. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I actually found that I could relate to every single one of the sentiments that were mentioned in that Barna article. I've been to church where I felt like, man, I really, really enjoy it. And I've been to church where I felt like I'm going out of habit or I'm going because I have to. And, and oddly enough, when I experience these uh, sentiments, it all actually happened on one Sunday. And what I mean by that is when I was growing up, uh, my typical Sundays would have me go to three different church communities, three different services. And so we would wake up early in the morning and we would go to uh, this one church here in town. Uh, they were super kind, um, just a, a servant's heart with, within the entire body. And they actually, the reason we got plugged into that church is because they helped my parents out with uh, ESL uh, and just learning uh, the English language. And so we would go to this church. It's probably a church of about 200. And it was a church that we went to because of habit. But it certainly was uh, not something where I was super eager to go, mainly because they didn't have anything that could connect with me and my brothers. We were probably 10 years old or under at the time. And majority of the church population was about 65 and up, uh, probably a good 99% um, were 65 or over. Great people, super nice, uh, just super hard to connect as a 10-year-old. And then we went to the second church. This was uh, my parents' church. This was the Haitian church here in town. We would go mid-afternoon, and we simply went because we had to. And I certainly um, remember some amazing experiences and, and certainly connecting with some great people, but all in all, it was my parents' church. And the last, uh, um, and that evening we would go to, to youth group, my brothers and I, we all would go to our neighborhood church where we would have our youth group and we would have a blast always and we enjoyed going to that church community. And the thing is, though we only hung out with the youth group, we didn't get to go to the Sunday morning service until later when we could drive. But I remember even before that time, there was a picnic that we were having, a church uh, picnic and uh, it happened that we were able to attend that church picnic. And I met the rest of the congregation, so the rest of the adults, not just the youth kids. And I remember just feeling right at home. Though I didn't know anybody, I felt right at home. And so kind of going back to the reasons on the, Bar on the Barna statistic, one of the things we saw is uh, the people that would say that they would go to church out of habit, uh, a lot of times would be a part of denominations where it's a large church or, or what have you, um, and they, they could just kind of blend in. Those that would say they go to church because they have to, at times it would be um, a small church community and they knew that everything would be dependent upon them. And those who said they went to church because they enjoyed it, one of the cool things was whether it was a large church, a small congregation, the age demographic of the congregation, it didn't matter. Those who said that they enjoyed church gave many reasons as to why they enjoyed it. One would be because of the worship service. It was powerful, had really feeling like I engaged with the Lord at, our, at, the, at the worship services. Another would be, man, it's because of the teaching, really feeling convicted this morning or, or encouraged by the message. Others would say it's the fellowship. I really, really love getting to see just my community on a, on a weekly basis and really love catching up and seeing how God is working in the lives of uh, the body. But the thing is, though, that, though these answers would vary, none in particular would be the reason as to why uh, you would see a trend with people loving or enjoying going to church. You could have a church that you feel like has an awesome worship service, but you're not necessarily uh, too keen on the teaching. Or you could be at a church where you feel like, man, you're really being equipped and the teaching is growing you, but you're, you don't really connect or fellowship with the other believers. So the thing that 
was revealed within this study to be the common connecting point or the common factor as to why these individuals love going to church, whether they recognize it or not, it was the fact that they were serving one another. The common thread or the common uh, point, data point that would reveal why someone enjoys going to their church was simply because they were active within that church community. They were serving the needs of the body within. And the thing is, it's not just serving to say, I need to sign up for something, but it's serving out of an overflow of what God is doing in your life. And so today is part two of our series titled uh, Mission or Ministry and Mission. And last week, Chris spoke on mission and what it looks like to serve outside of the church. And today I'm going to speak on ministry, what it looks like to serve inside the church. And today we're going to look at Acts chapter 6 and we're going to look at what happens when the needs of the body within are not being met and how the apostles early on responded uh, to the needs of the body. And in particular, I want to um, uh, reference uh, what Chris mentioned last week in Acts chapter 3. We saw that Acts chapter 1, the Holy Spirit comes down the day of Pentecost, and then the, the believers are just empowered by the Holy Spirit, preaching powerfully, and many were coming to know the Lord. And then at the end of Acts chapter 2, you see the fellowship of believers, how they were selling all, the, all their possessions and just enjoying that fellowship and that community community unto one another. You move to Acts chapter 3, we see just the mission of God continuing to go in the towns and pray for the sick, he, bring healing to, to, to the lame, and continuing to profess God's word. And m many were becoming, or many were coming to, to be saved daily. At the end of that passage, same thing again, you see the fellowship of believers. People are selling their possessions, living in community with one another. But the thing is, as the church continued to grow, you certainly, you had uh, reasons for which strife or division would kind of creep up. And what we see in Acts chapter 6 is as the Greek Jews were coming to know Jesus and they were coming to Jerusalem, the Hebraic Jews they were not necessarily getting along. And there was tension and strife. And so let's go ahead and read uh, what was taking place uh, during that time. It says, in those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would, be, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven, seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn, their respons we will turn this responsibility over to them and they, and we will give our attention to the prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. They chose Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timor, Par Par Parmenas. These are fun names to say. Nicholas from Antioch and a convert of Judaism. They presented them to they presented the men uh, to the apostles who prayed over them by laying on laying their hands on them. So the word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. So this passage is an incredible example of just the unity and the fellowship of believers. And we also see that the same, the same thing from Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3 People were coming together and fellowshipping with one another, but as the church continued to grow, there was strife that would creep up within the church community. And so as disagreements or disunity would come up, 
we saw that the apostles decided to respond by calling the people to a greater level of commitment. So instead of addressing the issue by condemning one party or by saying, well, you know what, maybe you need to stop complaining to the other, what they said was, hey, we are committed to one another and let's increase our level of commitment unto one another. And so they, they chose the seven to serve that body within. And the thing is, what the apostles knew is that serving one another, serving each other's needs, using the gifts that God has given us to be of service to a brother or sister in Christ, that unites the church. If there's division, serve. That will bring unity. If someone is hurting, serve them, serve their needs. If there's apathy and feelings, that, feelings of indifference among your church body, serve. And you will grow to have God's heart for one another. And so the apostles knew that serving was what was needed in this particular environment. And I want to give just an overview with how God has gifted all of us to be able to serve. Simply put, the word ministry means serve, and it also means to serve. And the apostles said they wanted to appoint seven to be able to serve the body, the church community there in Jerusalem, so that they can continue to serve the word of God in preaching and bringing forth the good news. And so they recognized that they had a specific function that they were playing. And if they decided to do the other, serve the body, shepherd the people, that they would not be able to do what God has called them to. And so we see that there's a distribution of gifts and abilities that God has given us. And at times we use our gifts to profess the good news or we use our gifts to, to uh, interact within the body. And other times we're not using a particular gift, but we're just empowered by the Holy Spirit and recognizing the need that needs to be tended to. And so 1 Corinthians 12 gives us an overview of how we have been created to serve one another and how God has, God has empowered every single one of us to be able to do so unto each other. In verse 4 in 1 Corinthians 12, it says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. It says in verse 5, there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And then it says there are different kinds of workings, but in all, in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. So we can serve each other by meeting each other's needs. We can serve by discipling one another. And we can serve just by merely coming together and seeing God's spirit move among us. And so I want to talk about the first uh, aspect where they, in verse four, where it says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. And what they're referencing here is the spiritual gifts that we've been given so that we can be a blessing to the body and be a blessing to those that don't know uh, Jesus. And we see this manifest in a couple ways. Within our church, you can tell what someone's spiritual gifting is typically because of the way that they testify or talk about what God is doing in their life or by the ministry they choose to participate in. So you can use your gift of evangelism to serve in the youth ministry, for instance, or be in an outreach ministry. Teachers can serve in the children's ministry or family ministry. Those with the shepherding gift, prayer or care ministry. Apostles, they can lead the church at times, or uh, we see many of whom uh, are apostles in the church and who are active tend to start something out of the church. Like they're the ones starting the parachurch organizations. Prophet, prayer ministry, keeping the church accountable to what God is saying in his word. 
And also you can see this through one's testimony. It says in, in Ephesians that Christ has a portion to each one of us these different gifts so that when we come together as a body and we speak to what the Lord's been doing in our life, we then get to see a fuller reflection of Christ Jesus. It says Christ apportioned these gifts, but in coming together, we see the fullness of the measure of Christ. And so just by merely interacting and engaging with one another, we can see how the Holy Spirit has empowered and gifted someone to be able to speak and bring perspective and insight about something which maybe the evangelist talking to the teacher, the teacher may be uh, gleaning some new insight about how they can be more evangelistic. Here at, uh, at our East site, we actually have a group that meets every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And feel free to join us wherever uh, you may be watching from. If you're ever uh, around town, feel free to come. Uh, at 9 a.m., we have a group that meets, and, and all they do is they, they discuss the passage and the topic for the day. And it, this has been such a blessing to so many within our body because what you're seeing is you're seeing the different perspectives based on how God has gifted every individual. And as they partition, as they share what God is doing in their lives or what they're seeing through the scripture, Christ is being glorified. And everyone within that particular group are coming to a fuller knowledge of Jesus. That passage goes on in Corinthians and says, there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And this is referencing how God works in a believer to serve and meet the needs of the body. There are two words we see, two Greek words for ministry and scripture. It's diakonoin and leitugia. Diakonoin is where we get the term deacons. Leitugia is what we get um, clergy and, and liturgy, uh, actually, liturgy and then clergy to serve that liturgy. And each word just means to serve. One is to serve, the other is a service or a ministry. And so what we see in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 when the apostles are talking about appointing individuals to be able to serve that body's needs, they're not talking about the spiritual gifting from which someone's been given and how that can be applied to a specific area. They're more or less talking about there are needs among the body and all of us are called to serve those needs regardless of our spiritual giftings. But I think something is key here. What, what we have to see is as they called these seven men, they asked for a qualification. They said, who among you is filled with the Holy Spirit and who among you is wise? And it was those individuals that they called to do this task, which was helpful. It was heartwarming. It was a caring but it was also administrative. And so the specific skill that was involved was not necessarily tied to the qualification or the reason for which they were called. And I bring this up because I think about just the many ways that we can serve within the body and the many ways that we can feel like our service is not tied to God's glory or someone else being blessed. I think about, I'll use uh, uh, myself for an example. I, I remember uh, probably about six, seven years ago, I, I was uh, tasked with putting mulch around all the different tree beds uh, here around the property. And I remember that was absolutely miserable. And it was the first time that I had experienced sunburn because it was so stinking hot on that blacktop. But part of me doing that, it was um, moments or glimpses where I would reflect and think, man, I get to be a part 
just do something this small and this many. I get to be a part of something much larger and serving the body and serving our church, but also bringing glory to, to God. But I can also remember when I signed up about five years ago to be on the setup crew. I have not set up one chair. I signed up, immediately forgot, and never came early to be able to set up. And so certainly um, it's not all uh, roses as I look at my, my history of saying yes uh, to serving in God's body. Now, one of the things that I want to point out, however, is sometimes we can, we can consider or think about just these areas of service as being completely isolated or, or disconnected from what the Lord is doing. And at times, we can come and say, you know, we're, we're a, a volunteer in the children's ministry and we don't see how that is bringing glory to God or how that is serving uh, someone else's need. And you know what, we're going to do our time and we're going to be done with it. Or, you know what, I'm going to come and, and be part of the setup crew, but yeah, I'm going to be done with it here soon. Or I'm going to be part of uh, the greeters or, or what have you, you named the ministry or you named the need that is presented. I think sometimes we forget that as we're meeting the needs of the body and as we're doing these menial tasks, that God is glorified and what we're doing is, is connected to another individual within our body and it is meeting a need within our body. The same as when we get to use our spiritual gifts to disciple one another. We have to consider that when we meet a need, just like we saw here in Acts chapter 6, it is all working toward bringing more into the body, equipping the body. In Acts chapter 6, it talks about how many came to know the Lord after that need was met because people were then able to operate in other giftings and doing exactly what God called them when it came to ministering the gospel. And so we can serve in very specific ways based on how God has apportioned his Holy Spirit to us. And we can also serve in more general ways. And the more general ways are also based on God's Holy Spirit and dwelling within us. Because in Acts 6, it talks about men who were filled with the Holy Spirit and of wisdom to then serve. And lastly, in that 1 Corinthians uh, passage, it talks about how there are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. And I just want to speak to just the idea of us coming together and fellowshipping with one another. We have specific gifts that we can use to serve the body. We can also serve the body in more general ways, but what we do know to be true is that when two or more are gathered, there he is in our presence. And when God is in our presence, we can also experience miracles happening. We can experience healings taking place. We can experience words of wisdom or words of knowledge that is not of human wisdom, but of godly insight taking place. When the body of Christ comes together, we see God's spirit move in powerful, powerful ways. And so two of the ways in which we've been uh, gifted or, or two of the ways in which the Holy Spirit manifests within us has exactly to do with serving act, like directly one unto the other. And then the third way is just by being together and worshiping the Lord. So what I want to do uh, as we close out, I also want to uh, invite all of you to come to our volunteer training night. If you want to know how to get plugged into a ministry and how to serve the body, come to our volunteer training night. This is going to be church-wide. This is every single site. And we're simply going to have a time where we're going we're, we're to focus on training for many of our leaders that, <coughs> that are a part of a ministry 
But we're also going to celebrate the fact that we have the opportunity to serve God's people. And so if you've been thinking about joining the prayer team or you've been thinking about becoming a children's volunteer or you've been thinking about joining the connection team, whatever ministry it may be, tech team, we want you to come and recognize the ways in which you can serve the need of another and glorify God while doing so. Let's go ahead and take a moment and just reflect on what the Lord's revealing uh, in your heart through this message. Let me pray us out. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, God, that you indwell within us and you empower us to be able to serve one another, to be able to meet the needs of a brother or sister, to be able to disciple one another. Father, we're thankful that when we come together, your Holy Spirit is powerfully at work. And it is when we have a heart of service service unto one another, that we can see just your miraculous power and the ways that you can bring healing, bring insight, bring a word of prophecy. Lord, we pray that even if we don't see in the immediate how what we're doing within the body is glorifying you or meeting a need of someone within the church, Father, that you would remind us continuously that you are proud of us and we don't have to do anything to make you prouder, but you are also glorified because we are, we are recognizing that we are connected to you and your Holy Spirit and being able to serve another person within the church. Pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, have a great day rest of your Sunday, and please join us for volunteer training night on August 22nd, starting at 6 p.m. We'll see you there.